Imagine the year is 2100. Humans have recently gone extinct, but somehow dogs have survived. You are a small dog bred for cuteness over generations. What happens to you? As you venture outside the remains of your home, two things are on your mind, survival and reproduction. In terms of food, due to your size, you are able to find some morsels of food and puddles of water to satiate you. You want to eat squirrels and rodents. However, whenever you try to run, your feeble legs and underdeveloped heart prevent any chance of success. In terms of climate, your thin fur hardly keeps you protected from the elements. In terms of reproduction, you have almost no shot. If you manage to sniff out a mate, you also note the scent of larger dogs who would eat you in a second. Recognizing your fate, you sulk in the darkness. Due to the actions of your ancestors and the influence of humans, you are a genetic dead end, like many other countless failures over billions of years. You will never get to experience the nice squirrel dinner or the dopamine of a successful mating experience. Now, we have no issue recognizing the genetic dilemma when looking at the small dog and the big dog. Obviously, the small dog stands no chance against the big dog in a literal dog-eat-dog -dog world. However, if I were to replace this scenario with a small frail human male and a large jacked human male, then many people would have an issue. They might say something like, humans are smarter than dogs, so they have more possible outcomes, or that we are not literally fighting for survival. And I would completely agree. Humans are unique from the other animals. We can make choices in some form that can allow us very unique outcomes. And we are generally not murdering each other in the streets in some kind of purge scenario. For example, take Peter Dinklage, the actor who played Tyrion Lannister in the hit TV show Game of Thrones. Despite being given a less than ideal genetic hand as a dwarf, he used ingenuity and hard work to become a high performing actor. However, how many dwarfs did not make it like him? I'm sure that many dwarfs find happiness in life, but can we all agree that many have likely experienced an undue amount of suffering from other humans and failed dreams? Can we agree that the genetically disenfranchised have a higher probability of being genetic dead ends? And so this is the topic of today's video. What is a genetic dead end and what does it entail? A genetic dead end is a being who is unable to pass on his or her genes. An example of a genetic dead end might be someone with cystic fibrosis who is unable to perform many of the daily functions required by a modern western human due to a severe lack of muscular locomotion and control. Evolutionarily, a genetic dead end species would be a population which is unable to pass on its genes due to being unable to meet the demands of its environment such as resource acquisition, predators, some fatal flaw, etc. A great example of an evolutionary dead end species would be the giant Irish elk which went extinct due to an ice age and large antlers which prevented escape from predators in the woods, etc. Being a genetic dead end in humans generally entails two factors, being unable to survive and being unable to mate. For example, take someone who is severely disabled. They are likely unable to work, making them a potentially undesirable mate to others. Though the exception might be those rom-com movies where there's a rich, disabled, handsome man in a wheelchair. The inability to survive can also be applied to less hard and fast parameters. So someone might be severely obese and working a menial job so they can survive, but really they are missing the threshold for competing in a society since you need more resources to really enter the race with things such as health or fashionable clothes being considered resources. Once someone passes the first parameter of being able to survive, they now have the extra resources to enter the mating competition to pass on their genes. For example, someone could be really ugly, but since they are a billionaire, they are able to pass on their genes to their many transactionally acquired partners. Overall, this video just wanted to be a quick introduction to the idea of a genetic dead end and to leave you with some questions. Think about what qualities you have. Do you have a fair shot at survival and reproduction? Or do you have qualities that may inevitably make you one of the countless evolutionary dead ends of reality?